Welcome, friends, to Crazy Women Country, where women's voices matter. We bring you the greatest female voices in the music industry. From the artists, songwriters, and producers, to managers and executives, and all the women who make the music industry what it is today. Thank you for joining us. Welcome, friends, to another episode of Crazy Women Country. I'm Donna. And I'm Paula. And today we have Raylene Gale with us. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. Happy to be here. Good. Good, good, good. We're pleased to have you here. I love the Christmas background. The stockings and everything. That's quite cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, the first question which is the hardest question of all. I think it's easier from here. Who is Raylene Gale? That is a good question. Um, Most people would say cowgirl Barbie. I get that a lot. Um, I don't know. I'm a country singer. I'm a songwriter. I love to perform live and dance around and have fun. And um, I'm a cat mom. Love my cat, and yeah, that's pretty much it's pretty much me. I love fashion and design. I made my own wedding dress. Um, some non-musical fun facts, I guess. That's me in a nutshell. Cool. That's awesome. That is really awesome. That, I think making a wedding dress is just such an like a big overtaking. Like to me, I'm like, yeah, where would I even start? Because I don't sew, and like you know, like <laughs> sewing machines terrify me. So I, I yeah. I totally uh, envy you, and, and yeah, if I ever need something, I'm coming to you. I'm going to be calling you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. Design side, and she's more of execution, but um, I can sew a little bit. I'm more of like a if you need your pants hemmed kind. Of oh, okay. <laughs> That's cool. <sighs> yeah, bad experience. I I decided I was going to learn to sew, and I started with denim. Bad idea. I like kind of sewed my finger kind of into the pants. I'm like, oh wait, that's not supposed to happen. I'm like, um, yeah. So after that, I was like, I'm done. I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I'm always I've been really good at eye hand usually, but apparently sewing eye hand and foot coordination out. Just one two to coordinate there. <laughs> I thought I was mad when it comes to stupid things like that, but I think I think we're on a par here. <laughs> Oh, oh. This is okay, so while we're still going crazy here, let's let's get back into the music a little bit and uh, talk about your holiday release, "Merry Christmas, uh, Baby." Uh, tell us about that one. So I wrote this song for my sister um, back in probably 2017, 2018. She had her first like big breakup with her first serious boyfriend, and he had met all the family, and it was right before Christmas that they mm-hmm. broke up, and everyone was like, where is he? We loved him. What happened to him? And so she had to go to each one of them and be like, well, we broke up, we broke up. And um, I just remember watching her going through that and just thought, man, that's so tough to have like been through such a large amount of life with somebody and then spend the holidays alone and like heartbroken. And um, so I wrote the song for her. She's just such a genuine, like sweet person. She always wants everybody around her to be happy, even if they don't want her to be happy. And so even still, she was like, I hope he has a Merry Christmas. Like maybe I should just text him and maybe I should call his mom. Merry Christmas too. And I was like, girl, chill out. Like (laughs) just cut your ties, move. But she's so not like that. She's so sweet. My sister, she doesn't hold a grudge against anybody. And so, I wanted to kind of portray that in the song still to be heartbroken, but to be kind. Like, I do hope you're happy wherever you are. I still hope you have a Merry Christmas. And um, she loves it. It's her favorite one of my songs. And so I re recorded it as an acoustic version this year um, because she is now in the happiest, best relationship of her life. And we love her boyfriend now. And so I wanted to revisit the song for somebody else that might be, you know, heartbroken this holiday season and going through it and still confusingly wishing the best for their ex wherever they are. And I think that 
my sister is probably not the only person that's ever happened to. So I wanted to kind of bring it back and especially with everything that we've got going on and we've had such great support from the people that do stream my music and share and all of that, that I wanted to give them a little, a little holiday treat. So we took that one back into the studio and I'm really glad we did. Absolutely. That's awesome. That's awesome. She sounds like an amazing human being, your sister. Mm -hmm. To read that, so. oh, she's awesome. <laughs> That is good. Is she older or younger? She is two and a half years younger than me. Well, so she's the baby sister, so you got to look after her. That's so sweet. I love that. That's so cool. <laughs> um, well, I have to say, I love that you wrote that for her. That is just, that's what makes it even more special and probably why she loves it so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I write most of my songs for my friends or other people. And now that I'm all married and emotionally stable, writing a lot less about my own life and finding a lot of inspiration in the people that I care about most and what they're going through. So it's it's really sweet to, you know, write for your own sister, but also to get to write for your friends and see them get connected to the songs that are written for them. It, it It's very different. Cool. Um, I have to ask you, where did you get the nickname Cowboy? No, God, if I can talk English, would be fantastic. Cowgirl Barbie. Where did the nickname come from? That's very cool. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think it came over time. Clearly, I really like pink and I really like fashion and things that are very sparkly. I was always a Barbie girl growing up. Um, there's lots of pictures of me with my life-size Barbie and I had a Barbie themed birthday party and my life was just very very Barbie and I do country music which is kind of where the cowgirl part came in and um I I mean I was raised around horses and stuff like that my sister is a horse girl true blue horse girl um she rides horses and takes care of horses for a living and so I was always kind of raised with that like agricultural mindset and i think also just being from the south i'm exposed to so many like cowgirl things i have the southern accent and um got real solid southern baptist raising and uh so that's kind of where the cowgirl meets the barbie but i like to say i'm, I'm about 90 percent barbie and 10 percent cowgirl um i really <laughs> a girl's girl and less of a let's go get dirty and play in the mud. I, I like to ride horses, up, but I'm not trying to birth a cow or something. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's great. That's such a great name. <laughs> it is. That's a great nickname. Well, so tell me, who are some of the women that have inspired you musically? I am a big Megan Maroney fan, I guess, who isn't, but I absolutely love her. Um, I love Mackenzie Carpenter, who has kind of become her wing woman. Um, their song, Nothing Crazy, is hilarious, and I love it so much, um, as a, any female artist should be. Obviously, I'm inspired by Taylor Swift. I think that she has a remarkable career and business sense. Um, being less country, um, but still incredibly good. And I think there's a lot of female front runners right now. Um, but just really love on the entertainment side, I think that some of the younger girls, younger, they're my age, but um, like Sabrina Carpenter, she puts on a killer show, uh, just super entertaining. And I would love to bring some of that kind of like more choreographed side of a production into country music, which can be very like, here's me and my song I wrote on my guitar. Um, but I come from the entertainment industry. I did a year of contract entertainment at a theme park. And so I'm very accustomed to learning choreography and what it can bring to a show to really know what your feet are doing, what your hands are doing that like ups the energy to add cardio <laughs> to your show. It's like, can I breathe and do all this at the same time? Um, I love that. Mm -hmm. I I love, I'm so inspired by that. So I like bringing some of that in to my music as well, which is less specific. I think that's more of just like the pop industry side in general has a lot more dance yeah. performances, but I do love, I do love Sabrina Carpenter a lot. I think she does a great show. So That's awesome. Awesome. Those are all amazing women. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. But it reminds you a bit of uh, Rio McIntyre from the 90s. A lot of her shows were very, 
choreographed with you know, every song had something and you know 50 just changes that sort of stuff she was you know a huge performer um and obviously that's changed over the years but uh yeah there's not many like that now as you said most of it's on the stage just then the guitar the band and, and that's it really <laughs> um but yeah it's still good i'm not complaining it's still awesome but you know <laughs> Don't anyone get me wrong here, you know. <laughs> I, I was thinking while she was talking, I'm like, we're gonna have to start a boot camp that you have to sing while you're like running and stuff. Cause I mean, I mean, I'm I you know, I might yeah. be kind of tone deaf, but still I, I join in and be like, okay, let's do it, everyone. <laughs> That'd be very cool. <laughs> Crazy with a country boot camp, can you yeah. run and sing at the same time? <laughs> oh, that's very cool, actually. <laughs> run some push-ups. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that'd be cool. I love that. <laughs> okay, so I know you have new music coming out um, next Friday. Yes, I have one of the very few love songs that I've written and one of the very few songs about my own life that's on the Love Drunk record is coming out next Friday and it's called Sparkling. I wrote it for my husband, who is also my producer, so very, um, or one of my producers, but he works on all of my stuff. And um, he's my guitar player, live band leader, all the things. He's very important to me. Um, and, you know, like every other basic girl my age, uh, when we got engaged, I had a disco cowgirl themed bachelorette party and I loved it. I was like, I have to do this forever. How can I make this my permanent personality? And I've really done that. I mean, even you can't really see, but my Christmas decor is disco balls and everything's pink and everything's glitter. I love that. And I <laughs> like that all the time. And my husband hates glitter. He hates it. Glitter is his least <laughs> in the world. But thankfully, he loves me just a little bit more than he hates glitter. And he's been so supportive of me being so rhinestone cowgirl all over the place that I am. And so I wrote this song kind of as an ode to him um, that I get to do all these things and be who I want to be. And it's because he loves me so well and is so supportive. So that's what this one is. It's coming out on December 29th, which is also very exciting for me because my birthday is New Year's Eve. So very glittery awesome. birth. Um, I feel like you have to be into sparkles if you're born on New Year's Eve. Um, and so it's going <laughs> to be a day, and I, it's going to be the sparkliest year yet. I'm so excited. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. This is going to be one head of a party that night. <laughs> Absolutely. So happy cool birthday, early. Oh, thank you. Yeah, happy birthday for then. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 21 again, huh? I should be saying that because you might even be 21 and I'm just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was 21 again, that's for sure. 25. I'm set up for my quarter life crisis. So. <laughs> 25 back in the day. <laughs> it comes very retrospectively. <laughs> Start that's thinking like, ago. what if? Yeah. <laughs> oh. What would I do if I was 25 again? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. That's really cool. Well, um, while we're pondering what we would do if we were 25 again, would you like to answer some of our crazy questions? I would. I would love to. <laughs> and I promise we awesome. won't get arrested yet. Okay. <laughs> I love that line. The best line ever. That's my tag okay. line every time. Yeah, it's the best tag line ever. Um... What's your favorite type of transport? My own car, I think. I'm not a huge fan of airports, mostly the airport part. The flying part doesn't even scare me. I just don't like the airport. I don't like to have to take off my shoes. I don't like other people handling my stuff. I don't know, that one's not for me. Um, I've never ridden a train, I suppose, unless it's, I mean, I've done like a tourist attraction train, but never to actually get anywhere. Um, my dad owns a boat dealership, so I ride boats kind of a lot, but not practically, mostly just for fun. I definitely, mm. just to drive my own car and sing my songs at the top of my lungs and <laughs> to mind my own. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like fun. That sounds like fun, that does. Free trip. So tell us, do you have any guilty pleasure music? I love musical theater. 
<laughs> it's such a guilty pleasure for me because I'm not any good at it and I have no use for it. But oh my gosh, like pulled from the Adams music family musical, one of my favorites of all time. I will not sing any song as loud as I will blast that one on my road trips. I love music. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> um, okay. What's your favorite sporting event? None of them. <laughs> I don't <laughs> sports. Um, I, it was never my thing. My sister played basketball all the way into college. Um, so I went to a lot of basketball games. I would be tempted to say basketball just because I know the rules. Um, I nap through a lot of football games. Football games are like, <laughs> so that's nice. I would never go with my own free will. Oh. <laughs> that's very cool. I love that. <laughs> sure honesty here. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I love it. It's the best. Because I don't even know how most of the games work. <laughs> that's even better. Just make the rules up as you go along. Just shout with them for the hell of it. That's all. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> well, or make a drinking game out of it, depending on you know how you're feeling that day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's pretty much. <laughs> oh, well, tell me, if you ever wrote a book, what genre would it be? Oh, wow. I've never, ever thought about writing a book, but I think if I was going to write one, I would probably swing for the horror genre, like psychological thriller, Stephen King-esque type of book. Um, I really love horror movies. I love, I just think they're really well written. And mm -hmm. so I think that would probably be the one that I could, I at least kind of a storyline to would be the horror genre rom-com rom stuff or comedy or even just straight up romance is not my style i it's not for me but i like to read mostly non-fiction which is pretty boring so i probably wouldn't write non-fiction but um <laughs> probably horror i think probably yeah horror psychological thriller style book that's a real twist in the personality. You're going from this, you know, pink and everything to horror. I mean, it's like, me. I'm, I'm feeling like this, this Carrie comeback here or something like there's. <laughs> yeah, there's just something hidden deep in here. <laughs> there's a few questions I'm going to read for you. So I can't wait. Um, okay. If your life was a reality show, what would it be called? Oh, wow. A reality show. I never thought about, I don't really watch a lot of reality TV, so, I, unless it's like a competition, which hopefully my life would not be. Um, I can't imagine it'd be very interesting, it'd be a lot of me and my cat. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. I feel like That's there's cool. one of the ones out there. I feel like mine would be, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Just me writing songs with my cat. I don't know that people would even want to watch that. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> that would be very cool. Actually. I love to watch that. Cats are very entertaining. You'd be YouTube. surprised. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially if it like tries to grab your hand while you're playing or something. That that's that that that'd be hysterical. That's even better. That would be. Oh, yes, tell us. What kind of? I'm sorry. The spotlight stealer, my cat. I'm surprised he hasn't interrupted. He usually does. <laughs> oh, that's right. He's always welcome. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> we used to have a, a cat here that would interrupt all the time, and I'd be like, "I'm sorry," and she'd be walking across like wherever, and I'm like, "Yep, that's a cat." Yep. Yep. <laughs> no, tell us something on your bucket list. Okay, on my bucket list. <laughs> Uh, the first thing that came to mind was go skydiving, but I've already done that, so that's not very helpful. Um, oh, duh. 
on my bucket list is I would really like to sing for the New York ball drop, mostly because it's my birthday, but also because I think it would be really cool to experience the ball drop and not experience the crowd. That I'm pretty claustrophobic, so that really stresses me out. And also I'd really love to sing. So I feel like it's all a good mixing pot. But yeah, that's kind of a, I guess a reachable goal, hopefully someday, but um, that's definitely on my bucket list. I'd love to sing Auld Lang Syne after the ball drops someday. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, what emoji do you use the most? Oh, the circle one with the little hearts all around it or the pink one with the sparkles on it, the pink heart with the sparkles. Those are my two <laughs> easy, most used emojis. I love that. There had to be a pink one in there somewhere, you know, <laughs> with sparkles. <laughs> I love that. Absolutely. Well, but yeah. going from the sparkles, I have to ask, what's your game plan for zombie apocalypse? <laughs> zombie apocalypse? Hide. <laughs> Hide. <laughs> that's, that's probably my best goal. That's my best chance of living because I'm, I'm not a good runner. Um, I'm not very combative. I'm pretty small. So either need to hide behind a bigger person that looks tastier or find a good cave somewhere and lock myself into the tub. I love that. Hunt out tasty people and just hide behind them. That's so funny. Yeah. I love that. Does it taste like chicken? <laughs> <laughs> this one's tasty. <laughs> That's so cool. I love that. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm looking for what's the question next. Um, what do you do to help you relax apart from music? What do I, sorry, I didn't hear you. What do you do to help you relax oh, apart sorry. from music? What do you do away from music, yeah? I love to do my own hair and my own nails. Um, so right now oh. they're- nice. Oh wow, look at them. Mm -hmm. Uh, the day after my car broke down, I was very upset. And so I just wanted to take a day and I curled my hair and I painted my nails. It took me about four hours, but it's just such a, a zen place for me to light a candle and just full manicure, full pedicure and just kind of unwind. It has no consequences. If it doesn't turn out any good, I can just take it off. Um, but if they turn out great, then I have cute nails for the rest of the week. <laughs> so that's really my... <laughs> kind of way to relax. That's awesome. I love that. It's a bit different. Absolutely. All right. Well, hypothetically, what if I called you and said, Raylan, I have a dead body I need to hide. Do you know a good place? Um, firstly, you should never call me if you have a dead body because I am not a good secret keeper. I'm going to write a song about it. It's going to be on the news. Um, <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> not calling you. Yeah, don't call me. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I would say bury it really deep somewhere in the woods. But I, I don't know. I've, I'm not the person you should call. This is <laughs> You'd be the next country song, the next yeah. number one hit, and you're the one that's in trouble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I could do that better than I could help you hide a body, probably. <laughs> that's very oh. cool. I love that. Um, okay, if you owned a bar, what would you call it? If I owned a bar, I would probably call it. The first thing that came to mind was Puss in Boots and make it like a country cat themed bar. Um, the one of the bars that I play at is called Second Rodeo and they serve their drinks in these like little boot shaped glasses. So I was thinking boot, boot shaped glasses for for drinks and cat random cat decor we have like some strange eclectic cat pieces here in our house but um like those portraits of animals that are like a 
general and then it's your cat's head or whatever to just kind of put those everywhere and also cowboy boots and yeah that would probably be <laughs> that would be very cool actually that would be that awesome would be. That's, a good, that's a very cool name i like that <laughs> Tell us, if we made a movie about your life tomorrow, who would you want to play you? Probably. Oh, wow. Play me. I want to say Mackenzie Porter. She's another country female artist, but she's also an actress. And I watched a, a show that she was in recently. I think it's called The Travelers or something like that. And I just thought her acting was so mesmerizing and she sings country music. So I feel like she would be a good choice. That'd be awesome. That'd be a perfect choice. Love her. She's had some great music okay. for sure. Um, okay. Last question. If, no, I might be too obvious actually. Um, what was your first job? My first job? Um, well, I answered the phones for my dad's business when I was 14 or 15, as soon as I could start working. But my first job that I got on my own, I was an entertainer at Sea World in San Antonio. And um, I loved it. I loved it so much. One of the best jobs I've ever had. That's awesome. That is awesome. Sounds like fun, actually. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. Um, oh. So, what does 2024 hold? I believe you have uh, an album coming out in February? Yes, 2024 is finally here. <laughs> My debut album is coming out in February. It's called Love Drunk, and it'll feature the five singles that I released in 2023, as well as five new tracks never before heard or released, and um, hopefully a lot of full band shows, definitely some very special acoustic shows and duo shows coming up as well. Um, going to be headed to Key West for Chick Fest with Erica Sunshine Lee in January for a week of songwriting and singing songs with other female songwriters. And I'm super looking forward to that. That's going to be awesome. That is going to be awesome. Sounds amazing. <clears throat> I'll have to send me some uh, photos and things, and uh, yeah, maybe I'll get you to do some live feeds for you can do it from from our Facebook if you want. That would be awesome. That'd be I'm... awesome. No, That'd be cool. I'm so looking forward to cool. your your album coming out. Your music is great. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, we can't wait. Thank you. So, I'm okay. very excited for everyone to hear what they haven't heard yet it's i think it's yeah. very unique and special yes. and I'm very excited about it. it's going to be amazing it's going to be amazing it's going to be a major hit as well so you're going to be perfect it's going to be great looking forward to that and it's been a pleasure having you on today and you're welcome back anytime well, thank you so much for having me this was a lot of fun i really enjoyed this <laughs> we're glad yeah and thank you, friends, for joining us for another episode. Be sure to check out the links and follow Miss Ray Lynn. And we'll see you next time on Crazy Women Country. Bye. Adios. If you enjoyed today's episode of Crazy Women Country, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Be sure to click the subscribe button for new interviews weekly. And thank you, friends, for joining us today on Crazy Women Country, where women's voices matter.